Well, crap. There's not supposed to be anything loose inside of a hive mapper. Hey everyone, how's it going? Yes, there is something loose in this hive mapper, and the reason is I was swapping trucks from a loner truck to my regular truck that was just repaired. And I accidentally dropped it five feet onto the concrete. You can see the little bang up job right here. Uh, it knocked something loose in there. I think it's probably the GPS module or whatever from what I've heard inside. So let's um, try tearing into this and see if we can repair it. Okay, so I got some metal and plastic spudgers. Let's see if we can get this back case cover off first. And there we go. And the reason why it was so hard to take off was it's got these four pins that have been glued on here. And they look okay. You can probably put them back together. The fun part is going to be they potted or sealed this whole round piece here. So I'm going to have to find out how the heck to take that off. Okay, so after using a flathead screwdriver to literally scrape away at this epoxy or potting coating, there's actually six screws. One, two, three four five six and they look like they're probably allen they're probably not even hex but i can't get the crap out of it so i'm gonna have to try a low heat heat gun see if i can soften this material enough and actually get it out of here okay so i got one of the six screws out so far what i ended up doing was what size is this this is a one and a half millimeter allen i believe it is that's what it is the heat gun Got all the stuff around the corner, and now I got to go and individually heat each one for about 30 seconds to soften the epoxy inside of the screw head itself. And then I can just jam that on there and get it loose. Let's try it on the second one here. Only use low heat, don't use high heat. You'll end up actually melting the plastic. And, yep, it's turning. You get a few seconds. You, this is where the iFixit really comes in handy. There we go, it's out. Because you can put as much pressure you want on this bearing here and it never like binds on itself. It's perfect, I love these iFixits. So I should be able to pull this out now. Yep, there we go, that's two. Let me do this for the other four and hopefully we can pop it open and see the inside. Okay, so we got all six screws out. That actually works really freaking well, I'm surprised. So now this whole piece should lift up. I don't know if the heat sink is coming with it. It looks like there's a little bit of a gap, so it might just be the plastic piece. I really don't know, because as far as I can tell, no one else has made a video like this on YouTube or anywhere yet on how to tear it down. So I'm going blind here. So, what I can tell is, if I use the right, go back to the flathead, there is a gap here. Yep, see, there's a space there. So the fun part is going to be getting this up. Right now, I just got to make sure it's all loosened up. See, that went, went right in there. Let's take off one of these and see what's underneath here. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's starting to move a little bit. There we go. We're getting some movement. Ah, oh, okay, so... Yep, nothing. Woohoo! That heat sink's still hot a little bit from the uh, hot glue, the uh, hot air gun. There we go. Here's our first look. And whatever this is came off, and that's definitely not a good thing. <laughs> that actually went right here. And it looks like it's just an external antenna with a little tiny 
protrusion right there. I don't know if you can really see that on camera, but there's a little piece of metal hanging out there. And this says GNSS ANT, GNSS antenna. The rest of it's just a thermal paste or no thermal pad that's stuck onto it. And it actually uh, soldered on right there. So I'm going to have to do some crazy amounts of soldering to try to get that to reattach. I might have to scrape because this thing feels ceramic. I might have to scrape a little bit right around here to try to expose some more metal before I solder that on. But let's see what else we got going on in here. So that is a Raspberry Pi camera. Raspberry Pi 2018 HQ camera version 1.0 right there. Now on this side with the power, looks like they're doing pogo pins. Oh crap, I screwed up all those pins. <laughs> that's not good oh my god that is not going back together and they all just broke off well that's the end of that story right there buddy <laughs> so power came through this connector right here which for some reason did not slide off like it was supposed to hold on so this camera this high mapper is dead <laughs> And there it goes. And this should have came off with it, but for some reason it was just stuck on there. So it never came off correctly. Maybe because I didn't lift it up right. But yeah, this hive mapper is now dead. This is a fail. So let's tear it down the rest of the way. Let's take a look at this camera. Yes, it will. Okay, so there's your camera. Raspberry Pi. I wonder if you can just plug this directly into one of the ports on a Raspberry Pi and it'll work. The ribbon cable says Hellbender and camera. That's about it. So, yep, carrier, backer, top. So we'll put this to the side. This actually has some significant weight to it. Let's get this uh, power board out now. And see what we got going on. Okay, so we have our barrel jack, our USB-C. So chances are this also and this is probably some sort of power chip or something like that or something for the USB. Um, this transmitted power and also USB uh, data back and forth. So that's probably what that was for. Let's take a look at this side now. Hellbender. I don't know who Hellbender is. I'm going to look that up later after the video. But let's go ahead and pop this open now. Okay, Let's see if we can get this sandwich apart without breaking anything else. Not that it really matters anymore. There we go. So that came off. And looky what we got here. This is a Raspberry Pi compute. It looks like the CPU was epoxied on to the heatsink itself. Let's see if I can get some light in there. Yep, I'm going to have to cut that off later. Hopefully you can see inside there, but yeah, there's like this orange epoxy glue for the heatsink. And that's how it's attached directly onto it. But it's a Raspberry Pi compute unit. I can see the Wi-Fi little module on there. And eMMC memory. So that's where all your pictures are being stored at and the operating system itself. So that will come off later. Then we got here another little tiny module. Okay, what do we got here? There's a little pin connector here. That one didn't break that time. So we got here a bunch of test points. You know what? I see this little squiggle right here and a wire right here and an antenna. So this is probably your Wi-Fi chip right here. Yeah, well, that's... No, that is the GPS, because it goes right here. So that's your GPS controller. This is your Wi-Fi, which, for some reason, they never soldered a can on it. Usually, there's a metal can over top of this. There's a little tiny battery here. Presumably, probably to just uh, allow the Raspberry Pi compute unit to shut down safely and save the information on the eMMC when you turn off the car or it loses power. So this way, the information on the eMMC storage doesn't get corrupted. 
Then you got your three LEDs for the back. A few other little ICs around and yes, yeah, CM4. Okay, so this is a commu compute module four. I can get this off, get an adapter, and I can still use this as a regular Raspberry Pi. So even though I'm out one camera now, it's not the end of the world. I may have to really, really heat up this heat sink just to soften that epoxy enough so I can twist it off. Let's try that. It's a little gooey. There we go. It broke loose. <laughs> I think it's hot as ever. Okay, let's see if we can clean this up some. That's some really thick stuff. Oh, yeah, that definitely transferred heat back through. Needs to be cleaned up just a little bit more, but yeah, we have a full Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. Available to do whatever I feel like with it. So thanks for watching. Unfortunately, this was absolutely a fail, but at least I was able to recover the Raspberry Pi 4 that I can use for other projects in the future. Uh, any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next video.